Okay, hello, this is Martha Hines, and I'm here with Farina Burrell. And today we are making a video to talk about the goddesses in 2023. So Verena and I were each on panel discussions for EA Zoom over this past week, where we're talking amongst many other astrologers about 2023. And what we were both feeling called to really bring in in a very focused and conscious way is the energetic and the, the messages and the healing of the goddesses in particular in 2023. Um, and so we, there's many things we want to talk about and, <laughs> uh, but just to start with the why, like why this is so important to, I'll speak for myself first. And then Rena, you can say why for you. One of one of the many reasons that this is so important to me to consciously bring voice to and awaken in ourselves the reality of these goddesses is um first of all it's just needed period in this world but second when we specifically look at the astrology of this coming year we're going to have pluto squaring the nodes effectively pretty much kind of the whole year but precisely squaring the nodes in july of 2023 and when Pluto is exactly squaring the nodes, the nodes will, will actually switch sign that same week. Um, and when they switch sign, they have been in Scorpio and Taurus, and they're going to switch into Libra and Aries. So Libra and Aries, among many, many other things, certainly can be associated with the divine feminine, the divine masculine, the polarities of gender, the um, the dynamics in relationships, the me, my needs versus your needs, and the balance between all of that. So it's, to me, this year is, has this incredibly soul level, powerful potential for us all in both individually and collectively to dissolve our, our sense of what gender is, dissolve and um have sort of you know the caterpillar go into the chrysalis become the goop <laughs> eventually become the butterfly around issues having to do with all that libra aries stuff um and yeah and i'll pause there and marina now you take over because there's other thoughts too yeah Martha, um i'm completely with you and i think it will be amazing when we after i have spoken we look at the chart um later in this video when pluto is actually um squaring the nodes in july and the nodes are um, switching because there are so many things um, that we can go much more into detail what you have already said now and for me one important thing is yes the goddesses need to be witnessed and honored more because it's no coincidence that we have that people have um, discovered them. So we know that every time when um, planets or um, um, asteroids are discovered, it's time for them to be here and to be embraced um, on all levels um, from our psyche, from the world um, that they are needed and they are so needed because we all know that um it's about it's not um in regard to gender when we are talking we are just talking about feminine and masculine energies and not about um the identification of gender or the gender um male or female so we know that our world is out of balance and that we have centuries um, where we had hierarchical structures, where we had patriarchal structures, where the masculine energy repressed the feminine energy. And I think the asteroid goddesses are a wonderful um, way to reconnect because we can see them in our personal birth chart. We can feel them and see them in the heavens. And um, they have messages. They reflect something that is in you. 
everything in the heaven in the cosmos astrology it's the reflection of energy that is inside of us inside of the world and when we connect with this energy consciously and when we connect when we when we decide to connect with this goddess energy consciously we can awaken something that is already in us even though we might not have been seen it because we have not yet discovered it for us in the sky and inside of us and the connection to the asteroid goddesses in our in our astrological chart in the transits and can help us to reconnect to a part that is repressed that is hidden over lifetimes um and i think that now it's no coincidence that we both and many other souls feel the importance to reawaken these energies that have been always there. The asteroids have been always there over centuries, but now we're becoming aware of them because the pressure is so high and the pressure of patriarchy is so high that we all know that, I mean, Pluto through Capricorn, everything was breaking apart. Our world is breaking apart. And now with Pluto entering Aquarius, I think there is this huge, huge opportunity for really connecting to our soul's isness that has in, for me, in a very, very um, developed phase, no gender. But I think to come into this consciousness of Aquarius, the soul has no gender. Um, I think there is an important way that we, we see that we are all that is. And within that, there are feminine and masculine energies. And we need to rebalance that and to become aware of the feminine energies that have been repressed. And I think the asteroid goddesses are such a wonderful opportunity to do that. And a shadow of um, Aquarius is the dissoci dissociation and the um, lifting off the ground, lifting off Earth, exploring, um, wanting to go to Mars and destroy planet Earth. And step into higher vibrations and destroy our own body and health and it's no coincidence that our soul decided to incarnate in a body on planet earth so it's actually in a way our task and our mission to not only get along with having a body and the earth but really um embrace it fully and i think that these feminine energies are so much connected to mother planet earth to the body not dissociate from feelings from body from the flow of life from what we said before we pressed the recording this archetype of the great goddess that is life giving and life taking this life force energy that we have and we are not machines, we are not. And we are not designed to be machines that work in a linear way. We are humans, souls that are incarnated in a human body. So I think the goddesses um, can really help us remember these energies that are inside of us and in the cosmos and everywhere. I stop here. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and I think we talked, we made a earlier video couple weeks ago about the transits of 2023 in general um which we can put the link with this video to that but it's on ea zoom it's also on each of our personal youtube channels um and so in that video we were talking about a lot of these the the sort of more basic transits that are happening with jupiter going into taurus and going retrograde in taurus and the mercury retrogrades all happening in earth signs this year this 20, 2023. Um, so those transits also are just very grounding, bringing us to our bodies, bringing us to the wisdom of our bodies, all of remembering, reminding our, us that we are earth, all of that. Um, so that's, that's kind of like a undertone to all of what we're talking about with the goddesses too. And then uh, we also have Venus going retrograde 
um, that same week when Pluto is squaring the nodes and the nodes are switching signs. And as we talked about in that video, Venus is is currently the ruler of our of the south node in i mean sorry the north node in taurus and she when it, when the nodes switch signs she will be the ruler of the south node in libra so um so her interplay with all of this also of course brings in the feminine and highlights this need to be in the body and she's going to be going retrograde in leo and as I pointed out on the panel this discussion that I was on yesterday, I also noticed that when she goes retrograde, she's actually going to be opposite Eros, which is not a goddess. And so we're here to talk about goddesses, but I just, I wanted to just at least briefly bring in this, the fact that when Venus goes retrograde in Leo, it will be opposite Eros and Venus will be trining the North Node of the Moon. So this whole combination to me feels like this reminder that we have to come back to the reality that we are bodies, that we are embodied, that we have this Eros energy, which is certainly connected to sexuality, but it's really to me about, you know, life force energy that, that is what moves as us. And when we get caught in our brain, we, we we're disconnected <laughs> from all of that. Um, and yeah, I agree. I feel like the goddesses in so many ways bring us back to the arrows that it brings us back to the body. It brings us back to moving as life. Um, yeah. And so much more there, but yeah. Yeah. And I think just to add that before we look at the first chart, because I think what you said, arrows is so much the juice of life for me. So this juiciness of life. And um, I, I really want to, to um, emphasize with what you said with coming to the body, remembering. And I mean, we are in between these ages. So we are on the threshold to the Aquarian age. And I think that Pluto moves into Aquarius is one step further into the direction away from the age of Pisces and into the age of Aquarius. And as I already said, the shadow side of Aquarius is dissoci dissociation, is the desire to leave the body. And it's, I mean, it's fixed air, it's young. So I think the more and more we step into this energy of this new age of Aquarius over the next decades and hundreds of years, so it's a very slow process, the more we have to witness the opposite to be in a balance and the opposite is leo and that's fire and that's really much connected to the heart to the body to our animal body mm -hmm. and we have so much nerve and the nervous system is um, connected to aquarius too so we will have over the next year so many things and we talked that about that in the video we recorded together about the next year so many things will happen so many change will happen and that has not that must not be bad things but our body recognizes change every time as threat and so our body wants to be in the comfort zone so every change that will happen it doesn't matter if your mind knows that it is a good thing that is happening something that is happening that is new is a threat for your body so I think that this topic around and you are such a speaker for that Martha the topic around nervous system regulation is so important and we cannot regulate our nervous system with our mind we can regulate our nervous system just with our body and this feminine energy of being in the body is so important for the next not only the not only 2023 not only decades but the whole age of Aquarius <laughs> I would yes. just drop drop out into the world <laughs> yeah yeah and I mentioned that in the panel discussion I was on yesterday too that as you know one of the biggest things that the spirit world has been adamant about with me in terms of my, the work I'm offering in the world, they keep saying repeatedly that I 
have to, my work needs to have a major and regular component of supporting people to heal their nervous system, to supporting us um, to come out of the trauma state, come out of the sympathetic nervous system, you know, flight or fight response and come into the parasympathetic calming way of being um, for so many reasons. And when you bring up the fact that, yeah, of course, Aquarius is so associated with trauma, I get it now. I mean, just get it on a different level, right? Now I see, you know, the wisdom of why the spirit world is saying this so strongly. Um, Yes, yes. And I feel, yeah, I feel that our connection to the earth, the other thing they say is that this remembering that we are earth is huge. Like the biggest tool that we have for healing and regulating um, and repatterning our nervous system. Yeah. Message that comes up, um, what my spirit guides are telling me always is um, you have to take your body with you this message you um, can when you when you are awakening and when you grow and when you rise take your body with you and always I have very often this image of um, here in this situation that your soul incarnated in a body on planet earth earth it's really about um, the more you drop into your body the more you can rise high so it's this multi-dimensional expansion that is so needed so mm -hmm. that we, we don't lift off the ground, but that we expand, that we deepen into the earth and reach into the cosmos. And um, yeah, it's this multi-dimensionality what is so important and what I feel that um, there is a certain, um, or what, what I'm here for is definitely to, um, focus on this healing potential and the medicine that the energies that will come um, hold for us because we can decide how we want to interact with that and I think that all of these uplifting energies of the Aquarius archetype we can we can consciously interact with that and consciously balance that and here are the goddesses so important and Martha, I don't know how you feel. I would, I feel like looking at the chart when Pluto ingresses into Aquarius would yep. be a nice opener because um, it's with Hygieia and I would really love to. Um... And I also just wanted to say, you know, for everybody, we'll say more at the end, but um, I just wanted to mention in here that we are, Rena and I are going to be doing a goddess series starting in January for the whole year of 2023. Um, because this is so important to us. And uh, so we're going to be focusing on one goddess per month. We're going to be starting with Persephone and we're going to be doing these in groups of four is, or three, wait, four, three, four, four, <laughs> four. four, four goddesses and yeah. three, three, three um, four times five. three. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to have be doing them in bundles of four months, essentially. And um, the first four, do you remember them off the top of your head? Persephone series um Hecate Hecate and... idea yeah okay perfect yeah so um so we're gonna be doing one goddess per month and we're gonna be sending out more information about that soon but if that piques your interest please be in contact with us or sign up for our newsletters and um yeah so I just wanted to pause for a second and mention that and then we can say more at the end too yeah, we will definitely say more at the end because I think we, you feel when you now watch the video, you feel how passionate Martha and I are with this topic and it's too much for one EA Zoom uh, video. So, yeah. Yeah, and if it also I feel like there have been so many people who have said to me, oh, I need, like the goddesses are calling me. And if that's true for you, you already know it. So, so you know, if you're one of those people, just let us know and we'll keep you informed and you will be part of this journey yeah okay here is the chart um 
the the time please it's for it's for where i am living in austria so don't look at the houses when you now see the chart when you are watching the video but it's the moment when pluto moves into aquarius um in austria it's on march 23 i think in the us too yeah just the time is different right and we see that pluto when Pluto moves into Aquarius, and I actually really, ex I'm excited what you feel when you see that, Martha. Pluto moves into Aquarius with Hygieia. And I think, and it, Pluto is already squaring the lunar nodes in Scorpio and Taurus. And we have Juno on the North Node. And what I felt when I saw that was that there is this huge potential for healing so in the moment that pluto dips for the first time after 250 years into aquarius he will be accompanied by hygieia a goddess that stands for healing for this idea that sometimes we have to be ill so that our system can rejuvenate and be born be reborn again after the illness and our cells can like like having a fever and sweating out all the dirt and afterwards we feel like renewed and I think that yeah I stop here and I want to hear your thoughts yeah well and Hygieia of course there is squaring the nodes which just makes this extra 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 powerful yeah um and for me, I'm still feeling into what I I really feel Hygieia is about. And I did a whole video on it for EA Zoom. Um, she's right on my ascendant con conjunct natally for me. She's on my ascendant conjunct my moon. She's really powerful and strong in my own. Squaring my notes. Sorry? She's squaring my Luna notes. Yeah, yeah, in yeah. The first house. So yeah, there's something to learn for me too. Yeah. And so, so for me, um, when I look at the year, I mean, we just, well, tomorrow, so we're making this recording on um, December 22nd, 2022. And so tomorrow, December 23rd, there's going to be a new moon in Capricorn conjunct Hygieia, right? And, um, and I was looking at the upcoming year and there are Hygieia just keeps making it she, she keeps showing up in really powerful ways um so with this with Hygieia squaring the nodes conjunct Pluto as Pluto goes into Aquarius I mean again it just for me it brings up a lot of more questions than answers in a certain way um yeah okay so what is it that Hygieia is trying to say what is it that she's trying to remind us of um one of the things i feel her reminding us of is that we have again have bodies like we we have bodies that have a a medicine and uh they have needs and those needs teach us things you know so and hygieia is very much about daily routines associated with hygiene <laughs> the body the needs of the body um sort of like virgo but and then she's also about the transmutation of poison so she's so her symbol you know is the those the snakes that that are associated with um the medical profession and and one perspective on her is that she's associated with the fact that sometimes poison can be medicine in a very particular used in a very particular careful way right so there's there's something there's some kind of wisdom there too that like hey we look at a snake for example and we freak out we get scared okay well um and i did a whole interview with uh don bowman brunke who wrote a book all about snakes and she talks about hygieia in that book but one of the things that Don points out is that if you look at the st statistics of deaths by snake bites in the United States, um, cows 
actually kill more people than snakes do in the United States, right? So that's a whole topic. <laughs> but so when I think about Hygieia and I really feel into, okay, what's this wisdom that's trying to come through here with Hygieia? There's something there about that wisdom that coming back to why are we scared of snakes? Why are we scared of poison? They can kill, poison can kill, illness can kill, but what's really what's the, what is that really about you know what's the reality of it <clears throat> so yeah i don't i don't have answers so much like just wondering <laughs> curiosity yeah, it's very much this energy of what when something is triggering me that can be a sign for what wants to be healed and i feel that with pluto too so both mm. together in aquarius and ruled by uranus in taurus mm -hmm. and the resolution note for the square to the lunar notes is the south node in scorpio yeah. yeah so there is something around um maybe for you when you are watching that around that time maybe this energy of okay something is triggering me or i am afraid of something maybe to feel into that more because it might be a way to heal something or to integrate something um yeah i don't know but th that's what's coming up for me yeah beautiful yeah i feel like you know that's like a whole we're gonna have a whole month to talk about hygiea for anybody who is interested yeah. in diving more deeply into her but um yeah, yeah really powerful mm -hmm. and i really would like to um because I feel that it, we, we just had a peek into this Pluto and Aquarius. And I really definitely want to look at Pluto scurrying the nodes with you because we already talked about that. But Martha, do you think, because uh, as we um, said before we recorded, uh, press the record uh, button, um, this Jupiter leading us into the year with the goddesses, shall we give that a look? Yeah, maybe we just briefly look at Jupiter and Mars um, with the goddesses, and then we could look at the eclipses. Yeah. Um, Perfect. Yeah. Because I think that is really um, interesting, and I showed that that with my astro gold, that um, that are the transits from now. But I switched to one week. That let me see when it starts from, or I can say it before um jupiter who entered aries on december 22nd uh, on december 20th um will travel from february until april with vesta diana and astraea and we can look at that now so here in february here's jupiter in six degree Aries and closely conjunct by Diana and Astraea is at that time still in Pisces um, but he will be already with Juno and then I have um, my program at one week so when we switch for one week by another we see that Jupiter here is now with Astraea, Vesta, Jupiter, Diana then they meet Chiron together and they wander through Aries the whole March. Then Diana changes into Taurus, but Jupiter is still with Astraea, then with Aries and with Vesta. Yeah, and then in April, it um, it go yeah they 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 leave each other but they separate from each other. But what I wanted to point out is so interesting that we have this, um, this topic around Jupiter in Aries is accompanied by the virgin goddesses. So Vesta is one of the virgin goddesses, Diana is one of the virgin goddesses, and Astraea is one of the uh, one of the virgin goddesses too. So the only virgin goddess missing is Pallas Athena. And I think with Jupiter and Aries, we can have, there's, and especially with Chiron, there can be such a 
healing energy around the divine masculine with these virgin goddesses there because i think the the a little bit more challenging that side with jupiter and aries can be this my way is the only way and i'm running through my life and i'm a little bit too hasty and a little bit too um maybe a little bit narrow-minded so I have natally Jupiter and Aries. I love Jupiter and Aries, but that's a shadow that we are too fast, too quick. We want too much, too, too fast in a way. And I think that at the beginning of the year leading to this Pluto ingress into Aquarius, especially with the goddesses there, there is this healthy way of individuation that we have with the goddesses in Aries. So these are virgin goddesses. What does that mean? That means that they are whole unto themselves. So that there is a separation. The virgin goddesses know they are whole unto themselves. And they can set boundaries. They can say, no, Diana, this wild spirit who is living in the forest and um, does not care what others think of her. Um, and that's a very, in my, in my feeling or from my perspective, they can show us how to be in this Aries energy and in this Jupiter Aries energy where it is about following our truth, following our intuition. And they call us back into the temple when we are too much on the road, on the Jupiter road. So they tell our Jupiter part that once to explore new territories. And that is wonderful. With Jupiter, there's so much juice into this. I want to try something new. I am courageous enough to leave the noun. And I must leave the noun because it's no longer working. And now, after this dreamy time in Pisces, I finally step into my power and I am on the road and I am on my pilgrimage and I am not afraid to make mistakes because they are just experiences. And the goddesses say, okay, yeah, great. We are walking with you. We are courageous, but we know that we need from time to time some temple time. And the virgin goddesses are so much about this inward focus, looking inside, especially Vesta tending to your inner flame. How is your body doing? Do you, do you need rest? Do you need to nourish your inner flame, your inner um, passion, your inner life force, so that you don't burn out on the way, on the Jupiter way? And I think there is already so much grounding and healing happening here in the first months of the new year, when we really allow these goddess energy who are reminding us of our me time of our temple time of this and giving us maybe um, a certain feeling of you are not you are not alone even though you feel separate you know that's this i can set healthy boundaries but that's coming from a place of because i know i'm enough and not, I set healthy, but I set boundaries because I have to, 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 yeah, this more this fight mode. I think it's more this, this, the virgin goddesses are for me so much about this. I know that I'm whole unto myself. It's not dangerous to set boundaries in a way. Yeah, I, I think I stop here. <laughs> I I just love everything you said. I think that's so beautiful and I don't have a lot to add to that part, but I love it. Yes. <laughs> yeah, and what is interesting too is that we have um, another um, planet that is um, traditionally associated as male or as masculine, not male, masculine Mars. And at the moment, when we are doing this recording in um, December, uh, Mars is still retrograde in Gemini, and Mars will turn direct in the, I think, around, um, ha do you have the, the date in your mind, Martha? I it's think like, around January 10th. Yeah, at eight degrees, I know it's eight degrees Gemini. I'm trying to remember the yeah. exact date, but 
it's yeah it's around yeah that. it's at the beginning at of january and then mars too mars will um constantly traveling with goddesses the whole year so In january 12th january 12th goes direct okay january 12th um at the beginning hecate travels together with mars through gemini and through cancer and um, from march until may then mars travels travels with pallas athena through leo virgo and libra from May until September. After that, Mars travels with Persephone and Lilith through Libra and Scorpio from September until November. Mm -hmm. And after that, Mars travels with Ceres through Scorpio and Sagittarius through November and December. And I think that, so we have the goddesses with Mars, Hecate, after that, Pallas Athena. After that, Persephone and Lilith. And after that, Ceres. And I think that we will talk about all of these goddesses in our goddess series. Um, but I think that there is something around, especially with Hikate and Ceres and Persephone, so these goddesses that are very much about crossroads and that are able to go into the underworld, to go into the earth, into the body. So Mars, that is this spark of willpower that is outside. It's young. It's um, the leading edge of our soul's evolution. I'm paraphrasing Jeffrey Wolf Green. So Mars, as the leading edge of our soul's evolution, is accompanied the whole next year and beyond by those very powerful goddesses and especially goddesses that are about going into the underworld the dark feminine too with Lilith so being in the body looking into what is underneath the surface and who are more in a way um very the focus is very inside, down and in. And it's in a way balancing Mars, who is out and into the world. And um, I mean, in, in um, he will be traveling from May until September with Pallas Athena too. So I think Pallas Athena is for me a goddess that has a very healthy balance of masculine and feminine energies. So there is, she is this vicier. So she is a goddess that has creative solutions and strategies and she sees it and then she follows it. But she's very much connected to our intuition and third eye too. So even there is this, that Pallas Athena whispers to Mars all the time in that time, um, like, don't run, don't just fight and run, um, feel into it and what can be new creative solutions where you maybe don't have to fight, but where you can make peace in another way. And um, yeah. <laughs> I love that. <clears throat> yeah. And for me, one of the things that comes up is Persephone as a potential midwife for the underworld. So Actually, it's also dawning on me that it's so perfect that we're, we feel called to start our series with Persephone, because if we, if this year is uh, so much about Pluto squaring the nodes, that that's, you know, kind of on this mega collective level, um, a, a huge invitation, <laughs> or maybe not even invitation, maybe it'll just happen, I'd say more like that in, in each of us that we have this opportunity to go down, 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 down into the, un the the depths of the underworld. But there's a midwife helping us do that, and Persephone is is that right? And and um, at a certain point in the year, uh, she will be on the south node of the moon on the eclipse in in the fall, and um, 
and at that, you know, anyway, there, there's a whole interplay of Persephone with Pluto squaring the nodes and being on the south node in, uh, no, at that point, Libra. Um, and I did a whole presentation on Ceres and Persephone also for EA Zoom. So that exists too, if you want to hear more about my thoughts on all of that. But but I feel like the goddesses have this role um, to help hold our hands essentially, you know, and kind of also again, help us regulate our nervous system to not be scared, you know, that, yeah, okay, maybe we need to go into the chrysalis or maybe we need to go into the underworld. Maybe there is this inner dark, dark time, but not dark in a bad way, just dark in an inner transformational time. And we're going to, we're not going to be alone in it. We have, we have so much holding us and being there with us, including these goddesses. Yeah, and what is really important for me to say, and maybe we can look um, at Pluto squaring the notes in a second, um, because actually um, Pluto will um, trine Persephone at that time, but it's really exciting. Um, and for me, it's, or what what um, came up for me the last days is that again and again, we have, when we, when we say, we must go into the underworld and all of these, I mean, the Venus cycle includes the underworld and you said so beautifully how important these underworld journeys are um, and that the goddesses are holding or are kind of, uh, Persephone is kind of guiding us. Um, I think that it's always so important to see that the underworld is a face on our journey. So we go into the underworld to come back to the light with all that we have learned in the underworld and maybe what we had have let go and this this Venus Inanna story of sometimes we have parts of us must die in the underworld so that we can resurrect and come to new life and I think Persephone she got her identity because she went into the underworld before that she was just Kore Kore was her name, and Kore is no name. Kore is just a word for girl. Mm. And then she went into the underworld or was abducted by Hades, Pluto. And then she became the queen of the underworld. So sometimes these deep down and in processes that are very uncomfortable in the moment sometimes give us a new identity so that we really step into what we are, what we already are. I mean, Kore was already, the seed of Persephone was already there. So nobody could make her Persephone. She was already Persephone, but to unfold and to really own this, she maybe had, she, 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 yeah, she must go into this deep, dark place inside of her. And because we are all these goddesses, we are all of these and we are Pluto and we are all of these. We, we are the underworld, we are the light. And I think that always remember that it's not about be going into the underworld and staying there. So I think we both are very, um, we have the same perspective that we say it's about embracing the light of all that is and coming back to the light with the gifts of the underworld. Um, yeah. yeah, and and one other thing that's really important for me is I feel so strongly that when we go into the underworld, when we get to the very bottom, we find the light. Like yeah. the light isn't only above the surface, it's actually also in a certain way, most strong at the bottom of the underworld. Because if like if we're talking about the Venus cycle, we talk about Venus going into the underworld yeah, as the it sun. gets closer, as it gets closer to the sun, and then it's at the the bottom of the underworld when it's conjunct the sun. So it's actually the most sort of just sort of swallowed into the light when it's at the bottom of the underworld. And which is huge furthest away from the earth so furthest away from our life 
is mm. the underworld, but also the light. So mm. it's mm. kind of, and I think it's so beautifully that you emphasize that, Martha, because that is something, this idea that Venus is in the underworld when she is closest to the light. That is mm. something that I cannot mentally understand or grasp, but my body is understanding it and my soul is understanding it. And maybe when you are watching now, just close your eyes for a moment and imagine that, that the underworld is there where it's when the light is, that when we are in the light, so to say. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Um, okay. Do you want to look at Pluto squaring the nodes and then do the eclipses? Yes. I can share my screen because I have um, just put up. So it's, um, we can, maybe it's it's the last um, week of July, right? Yeah, like July 22nd, something like that. Because Pluto is so for such a long time um, squaring the lunar nodes. Mm -hmm. It's like six days where it's exact, I think. Yeah, here it's now we have six minutes and seven minutes. So I would yeah, say we can that's good go with that. Yeah. That's good enough. <laughs> so yeah, what, what I just saw that is um, Pluto will try and um, Persephone and Lilith, asteroid Lilith at that time. What is pretty interesting, I think. Um, and Hecate with the sun opposite Pluto. Yeah. And the North Node with, with Aries, Sina. Yeah. Eris, yeah. Mm -hmm. Eris, Sina, yeah. Yeah, and then when we talk about the the fall with the eclipses, Eris, the North Node will be conjunct Eris, exactly. So yeah, Eris is playing a huge role. Huge, huge, huge. <clears throat> Would you like to look at um, the eclipses now? Or do you want to uh, say something to that chart? No, there's nothing else jumping out at me about this chart. Uh, for me to just this, yeah, just to 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 sum it up, these underworld processes that it might be very important to really, yeah, look inside so that we can grow multidimensional and evolve multidimensional. Here with Hecate, who can, who who is the goddess of crossroads and guides souls into the underworld, um, with the sun and Persephone and Lilith. This idea of, okay, yeah. Then let's see. Do you have the date for uh, the eclipse, Martha? Or shall I just? Um... Um, so you wanna start with the first eclipse of the year? Um... Yeah, we can do that. Okay, okay. so we're gonna really briefly look at the spring um, e eclipses and then we're going to go more into depth in the ones in the fall so Verena take it away yes <laughs> and so with the spring um, eclipses I have to organize myself so that I can see my notes um, um yeah what we see here is that Diana and Vesta are on the North Node together with the Sun in Aries. And what is very interesting is that um, Persephone and Black Moon Lilith, Asteroid Lilith and Ceres will be in Virgo and Black Moon Lilith, Asteroid Lilith and Ceres will be retrograde in Virgo. And for me, I, I gave this eclipse the name, um, the initiation. So because Pluto is already in Aquarius and I have the feeling that we are really ready to sprout 
what we have planted during the winter and especially the fall eclipses in 2022 is now ready to sprout and be awakened to new life and light. And it is so much about stepping forward, Aries, but in alignment with our values, Taurus, and especially with our nature, with our body. So an initiation in a very embodied way, in a way. Um, and with this, um, yeah, it's moving forward. Yes, we are in this Aries energy, but we have these Taurus goddesses trining the goddesses in Virgo the, who are retrograde. So really it's not about running and being too hasty, but really to drop in and from that place of inner peace, inner calmness, inner connection to our feminine energies and to our masculine energies in a very balanced way, stepping forward into the unknown, Pluto and Aquarius. <clears throat> yeah, and I also find it really interesting that that we're going to have a new, just before this eclipse, we're going to have the new moon before it will also be in Aries, but at the very, very beginning of Aries. And then this eclipse will be at the very, very end of Aries. So I feel like next spring there's going to be so much energy about beginnings startings like the you know pluto changing sign two new moons in aries one of them being an eclipse in and the nodes coming into the squaring of pluto and it's just a lot of start 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 but like you're saying you know maybe start in a very grounded like these goddesses are reminding us yeah again we need to be grounded we need to be in our sovereign being we need to be in that sovereign being that's in relation to the earth and in relation to our wild self diana um yeah 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 i love what you're saying and the second um so the second part of this eclipse pair is the lunar eclipse in scorpio on may 5th and i call that the growing pain because i have this feeling that we see here um that diana where's diana um she's in 16 pisces there well th this is last year you're looking at 2020 oh, yes because <laughs> because i was wondering what i'm sorry and so because my notes are not um aligned there you go oh yeah here we go okay <laughs> sorry for that and um, diana is this time um conjunct uranus and um mars in cancer is with black moon lilith in a trine to the moon in scorpio and at that time pluto and in a trine to Saturn, who is actually with Pandora. So we have this grand water trine between Mars and Black Moon Lilith, um, the moon in Scorpio. And I mean, it's a very wide trine, but it's still in the 10 degree orb to um, Saturn, um, the moon and Saturn. So it's a very wide water trine. And additionally, we have Diana with Uranus and the sun with Uranus. And Pluto is at that time retrograde. And I had the feeling that here, it's really maybe about this, um, that we, two weeks before that, to the solar eclipse, we we had this initiation and now we are confronted Scorpio with our, with our fear, with our deep trauma that is still stuck in the body, Taurus. And I have the feeling that around that time, it might be very, very important to do these deep purging and healing processes that we have already started in 2022 to, during the eclipses. And really um, this idea of that pain comes with growth. So we have labor pain, we have growing pain, yeah? And that we become aware of our own internal limitations after we step into the new so that we can heal them. And I think that especially healing on the somatic level and trauma and fear that is stuck in our system um, needs integration and healing. So I don't, I don't, I don't know it. But when I see all of these energies, especially Diana with Uranus in Taurus, 
um, I feel that there is something, there is a call of our wild animal body and of our stepping back into our nature and to connect with the rhythms of our body and the earth that can help us to overcome these um, trauma and fears that we have in our body since lifetimes, maybe, and the centuries. Yeah. And then there's the whole topic of Estrella, which is um, something, again, that we'll go into in our goddess series. But just to point out, Estrella will be on the North Node then. And and one component of her for me is that she's about uh, the choice to bring light onto the planet and to be the light bringer, which so many of us are. Um, and again, in Taurus, so it's like in being the vessel of the light through the body, through the earth. and yeah, it's much more there, but I love seeing that she's yeah. right there. Yeah, that's so wonderful, Martha, because one message I receive so often is to that, um, yeah, being the vessel for the light. So you need a body to, um, to, to, to receive the light so that the light has something that it can be received of, so to say. Yeah, and not just flowing around in the cosmos. Yeah, being an antenna. Uh, shall we switch to the eclipses? The next one is September. Something went wrong with Astrogold. I must say, we are not no, no, no before Christ. Sometimes, oh, I, yeah. <laughs> Oh, okay, wow. now we are here. Um, so is this the this is the second eclipse in the fall, right? October 14. No, that's the first one. Oh, the first one. Oh, okay. I don't know why in my mind there was a, so okay. Anyway, okay, great. Perfect. Yeah. So the first one is gonna be new moon solar eclipse, 21 degrees Libra on the south node yeah and there's with these eclipses there is so much uh to talk about <laughs> so for the sake of time um what what jumps out at you and then i'll jump in because i have so so many thoughts i would love to hear your thoughts what jumps out for me is that we have persephone with the solar eclipse we have um asteroid goddess lilith we have at that time series with Mars, Mars and a very, very strong Aries in Aries on the North Node and in a conjunction to Chiron, all retrograde. Yeah. yeah. And Diana is wearing the notes, by the way, to Diana and Cancer. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. I hadn't noticed that. Wow. And opposite Pluto. Mm hmm. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I I call that I call that the holy no because of this strong Aries power um and the the Diana and Cancer in opposition to Pluto and Capricorn I had this feeling of um that we get maybe becoming aware about the expectations of others or what we think others expect from us and that it might be important to um discern where we have to set some healthy boundaries and focus on ourselves instead of staying in codependent relationships and really this Aries on the north node um, this idea of standing up for ourselves even though it might create conflict and that sometimes it is not us that create the conflict by saying no but the conflict was already there but hidden behind a superficial harmony um, so Eris, this goddess is who throws the apple and then the conflict arises um, and the Tro Trojan war will be, yeah, will start, but she's not making the conflict. The conflict is already th there. She's just pointing out that there is conflict. Um, yeah. yeah ideas yeah. around that. I, I and I think I'm gonna make an entire video just about this because there's so much here. Um, but yeah, so one of the things that I, I feel really called to talk to is this I 
this reality that Eris was originally called Xena and and Heather Ensworth has an entire video just about Eris Xena um and I can put that and, link and we will we video. will cover yeah sorry we right. will cover um, we will cover Eris Xena too in one yes. month yeah yes absolutely yes um so what Heather talks about is that uh and other people talk about is that Eris, the discovery or the conversation around Xena slash Eris actually is what demoted, ended up demoting Pluto from a planet to not being labeled a planet. And there was a whole conversation about whether um, Pluto and actually also Ceres and Eris Xena should be considered planets. And one of the deciding factors on um when astronomers were discussing what the definition of a planet should be, one thing, one component of that, the rules they came up with, the criteria they came up with for what counts as a planet and what doesn't, fascinating. They decided that in order to be a planet, that, that body, that planetary body needs to um, essentially dominate its own orbit. So Pluto, Eris Zena, and Ceres don't fit that. They actually orbit with other planetary bodies. So therefore, they, can't not, they cannot be considered a planet because they don't want to dominate, <laughs> right? So that has so many layers of meaning and is so, I have many feelings about it, <laughs> which are not very good feeling. I mean, anyway, I'm frustrated. I'm very angry and frustrated about that that definition it doesn't it's not cool so um so one of the components that heather talks about is this need that the eris xena brings up this question of cooperation collaboration um that when we do speak something outside the norm this is that can be embraced right and it can be we can she wants to collaborate. She wants to orbit with other beings. She has, uh, she's 44 degrees, I think, off the ecliptic. So she, in other words, her, her orbit is very, very different from most of the other things that orbit our sun. But her, her difference is not an attempt to be radical or uh, rebellious. It's actually just her being her and her wanting to bring her own light in her own way to be in concert with other the whole rest of the solar system all of existence that's my interpretation of it and so this energy of eris zena to me is so many layers of things but it's you know hey if i speak up and say xyz maybe take a pause <laughs> let's take a pause and listen to each other um and not assume that us speaking a different point of view is us attempting to create a fight it actually might not be and maybe maybe that fight is needed maybe the trojan war was needed i don't know but um but it, like you said that her action wasn't necessarily an attempt to start a war i don't know what it was i can't speak for her <laughs> Right. But that, so yeah, there's so, so much power in that. And then on this particular eclipse, okay, so that the so energetic of Aracena is going to be really highlighted simply just because the North Node is going to be sitting on Aracena for a bunch of time. And just on a personal note, that North Node on this eclipse is going to be precisely, precisely to the minute opposite my natal node. So I'll be having my precise exact nodal opposition um, on this eclipse and and Eris is you know currently on my south node and anyway the Eris Xena energy for me is very very strong so but then the other thing that jumps out to me about this eclipse is that Lilith will also be very much in play on the south node of the moon opposite Eris Xena and Lilith also for me is a reminder to come into our full power. And again, I feel like that's a whole topic and we're going to have a whole month with Lilith too. 
Um, but I'm feeling this really strong need in myself and then in the collective for us to come back into this centered, grounded claiming and acknowledgement of our own power. Um, for those of us, especially who strongly identify with this dark feminine power, which I certainly do, but even for anybody, and certainly, again, this is not about gen your gender identification. It's just this, this energy of this, the power of all of existence that is us, right? And it comes in this feminine form. And Lilith, for me, is this energetic of, <clears throat> hey, I am a goddess. I am a powerful goddess. And I want to be met equally with the power of the God. Um, and I'm both really in reality, right? But I want to step into that power as power, not as victimhood or perpetrator, but just as fully present and grounded, embodied, real power. Um, and so with Lilith on the South Node, opposite Erosina, you know, um, among all these other things like Persephone sitting there. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it's just unbelievably powerful. Squaring Pluto, to me, it's, it's calling us to, to come into a different relationship with what it, what it is that is power, what is power, what do we want out of power? How are we going to use our power? How are we going to be powerful? Um, yeah, and that All power has, and that power has nothing to do with with power over. No, no, it's equality. And, and, yeah, what I feel so strongly, um, and I love everything you said, Martha. And what I feel so strongly, especially with when I look at the South Node, Lilith in Libra on the South Node. So she, she, in my opinion, left paradise because she doesn't did not want to lie under Adam so she said okay what you are calling paradise I create my own paradise I don't want to be submissive and especially in Libra where it's all about being on an equal level within other people within partnerships within friendships within every relationship with the world the relationship that we have with everything that is Lilith says we are on an equal level and we can create our own paradise where we are doing the rules that are actually yeah um honoring and respect everyone who is in the relationship and especially with Persephone on the south node I have the feeling there is something about can I show every part of me in my relationships can I be Kore the lightful young girl can I be or young man or young being or can I and can I show my darkest parts can I be there in my power can I be there in maybe with parts who need love and care too so there is something around can I show up in the whole the the wholeness that I am and can I allow myself to have seasons and to be all that is and can I allow my counterpart or my friends or my who am I in relationship with to have the same right to be that too and I think there is something very powerful and very loving it's a very it's the power of love in a way what we feel here with this goddesses in Libra with this really powerful goddesses in Libra this power of love pointing to Eris, who is, from my opinion, not the one that brings the war, but as you said, wants to actually, yeah, maybe she wanted to bring peace and she maybe wanted to show where are conflicts so that they can be healed. So, you know, it's sometimes we have to, we have to, sometimes it's very, and I think that, you and maybe you who are watching knows that it's some sometimes you have to be the quote-unquote black sheep and you have sometimes to have these conflicts so that something comes to the surface 
And in Libra, the shadow is that we repress it under the beautiful surface, but sometimes you have to put it out of the surface and show what is actually really there so that there can be healing and true beauty. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, and just briefly again, Eris is very, very, very strong in my own natal chart. So I have a lot of this energy in me and I identify it very strongly with it very strongly. Um, and one example of how it's come out in my own life that I think I've shared on other videos we've done maybe is that I, for a long time, I was a social worker and um, in my last job, I was a supervisor uh, for child protective services. So we were in charge of, you know, investigating child abuse and then deciding whether or not to take children from their biological family. Huge, huge, huge responsibility. And given my nature, I was often kind of the squeaky wheel. Like I was the one who would speak up and say, hey, this is not cool the way that we are operating here. Um, and I saw a lot of internalized racism happening. I saw a lot of um, parents being judged for absolutely no legal or ethical reasons whatsoever. It was very extreme what I saw. It was not good what was happening a lot of the time. And uh, and I would name it. And and so I was throwing that apple, right? But my intention was definitely, definitely not to start a war. It was the opposite. I was trying to save children's lives and I was trying to save families. Um, it was all about actually my Diana self on my North, I mean, on my midheaven saying, I'm going to protect, like there was actually an attempt to protect it was not the opposite of starting a war, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And it did create conflict. It did. But um, that wasn't me creating the conflict. The conflict was there. They were, the, the law was being broken. Children were being hurt. Families were being hurt. That was happening. So I was naming it and saying it out loud. So anyway, that's, that's, yeah, one example I of have, that. Yeah, I love that. And I have Eris conjunct my Jupiter within one degree on my North Node. Mm -mm. So, um, yeah, I know how it feels to maybe be the one who sees and feels things and shows that there's something going on that is actually not really okay. And yeah, that can come with loneliness, for sure. Mm -hmm. We have an Aries, this loneliness. Mm -hmm. But um, I think that there is, if it is true, and she's conjunct my Jupiter, so if it is true, if you feel it in your belly that, and you felt it, there was something wrong. You, you had to do it. Yeah. So yeah, I think it's quite powerful when we learn to embrace this energy and for sure it is no coincidence that we have Aries in Aries all that are born um, now and yeah but in regard to the time shall we have a last look at the last eclipse and then yeah, wrap really, up? really briefly I feel like we've touched on all of the major yeah. things we want to talk about but yeah just to close it up just a quick look so um because yeah that would be the last eclipse on october 28th so this is a full moon at what like five degrees taurus yeah but the node's still at the 24 libra aries point um and the north node still conjunct aries Yes, and so it's. Uh, oh, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. No, I just, I just named it um, after the holy no with the solar eclipse in Libra. I named it now the peaceful yes to our truth, mm. uh, because the moon is balsamic to Jupiter retrograde in Taurus and in a new phase to the North Node in Aries, and it happens shortly after the Mercury Kazemi. So new insights and deep realizations maybe just arrived. And we are ready to overcome our fears of loss and betrayal. Um, and um, I think that, yeah, with Venus and Virgo conjunct Black Moon Lilith, there is a focus inside and a healing 
and this idea that we serve maybe others by saying no. I think uh, Jeffrey Wolf Green um, said one time, I, I'm paraphrasing, the higher form of giving is saying no. And um, even the moon in a trine to Juno, so the sacred union within oneself, um, being self-reliant, being self-sovereign, all these Taurus energy, this Virgo energy. Yeah, I stop here. Diana will be squaring the moon and the sun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Diana and Leo is so much about the rewilding of our heart, the rewilding of our allowance to take up space. Yeah to be this light, um, to show up and therefore inspire others, to lovingly show up, to lovingly take up space and um, decondition from, from everything that wants us to fit in. Um, yeah. yeah, and again, I just feel this, this eclipse bringing us back to our body and back to our creative life force energy, the wild life force energy that is us and that is needed, like me as the flower that is me and you as the flower that is you. And, you know, in concert with the sun, Leo, um, the sun helping us to open all the way, our petals all the way. Uh, and then with the north, I mean, the, um, the, that full moon is in Taurus with Jupiter there in Taurus. It's just, again, coming to our body, remembering that we are earth remembering that we are life force energy and all of that yeah and what comes up um, maybe as a closing to this chart is that at that time we are already in the venus and leo cycle so venus starts her new cycle in leo and diana is um, actually um, going over these degrees where venus then retrograde in summer and started her new cycle so Diana can maybe, because Diana's archetype, and I have um, written an, a book about Diana that is still not yet published, and I have given two talks on EA Zoom meetings about Diana, and we both have together a whole Diana journey where we over, I think it's over two hours of video material where we just talk about the archetype of Diana. And yeah, Diana, more than yeah. <laughs> yeah, more than that. Diana is so much about, yeah, I think four hours or so. Yeah, again. Um, Diana is so much about this idea of rewilding, coming back to our true nature and deconditioned from everything that holds us back from really um, embracing our natural true self. And especially after Venus, Diana can really um, help us with this Venus in Leo work, I think. Really can give us more strength to follow our intuition and to show up in the way that we are and leaving this um the 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 rules of mount olympus of society to really tap into our heart's wisdom even more than maybe venus does because one shadow of venus is she wants connection and diana is totally fine with being some time alone in the woods so that's okay for her. So I think she can she can help our Venus part um, to become more self confident and to become more strong, and um, so that we can yeah do this Venus in Leo work in a very very um, powerful way. Yeah, I love that. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I think. How do you feel? I have the feeling there's so much more to say, but we have a whole year and a 12-month yeah. series about the goddesses. So I'm after, yeah, after giving this video, after recording this video, I feel so much more um, excited about our project and about our collaboration. So yeah, we already said that we will give a 12-month, 12 goddess. 12 part um, workshop series about the asteroid goddesses and especially about goddesses that are less well known. Yes, we will talk about the well known goddesses too series, um, Pallas Athena, Vesta, 
and um, Juno, but we also add all of these goddesses that are maybe not yet so much in your consciousness, um, like Hygieia, like Persephone, like, like Eris, like um, Pandora. Um, and we will, th the thing is, or the, how, it, how it will work is we have one month where we focus on one goddess and around the new moon, we will have a workshop where we share information about the astrology and the archetype and the myth, but also um, there will be a channeled experience where you really drop into your body wisdom and awaken the goddess within you. And two weeks later, around the full moon, we will hold a sharing circle where everyone, where the goddess speaks through us, through everybody of us and we can share our experiences with the goddesses yeah so the new moon is like we get to drop into the the energetic our relationship with that that one particular goddess we're gonna like we said we're gonna be starting with persephone so we're gonna you know on the, around the new moon go really deep inside and feel that learn about persephone and then feel the the energetic of who she is as us and then we'll we'll have two weeks where then you know there will be an online forum and you can share things online if you want or you can just be in your own internal personal process with Persephone for example um, or whatever goddess is happening that month and then as the the full moon comes into the fullness of that cycle then we're going to have the sharing time where we can then say yeah this is what came up for you or you or you or you or you as yourself as Persephone or as you're noticing Persephone in your life or this energy of you know maybe being the midwife of the underworld or whatever aspect of the Persephone energy is really alive for you because all of these goddesses have so many components and 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 one of the huge things that's so important to Verena and me also is that the goddesses are living and breathing as us. So our intention is not to come to this with ourselves as the expert who knows the answers. It's really about the reality that we both feel, and Farina, can you you can talk this on your own if I if you want to, but um we both really feel the the need, like the voice, the energy of the goddesses needing to move into the world, move through the world, move through us. And it's coming through so many of us, not just us, obviously, right? So um, even when we did the Diana workshop, which is also available online, if that's piquing your interest um, indefinitely, you know, that, that one's there already. Uh, as we've been doing that, and as I've been doing other things around the goddesses, so many of you have come to me and said, whoa, yeah, I have been getting called by Diana for months or years or whatever it is. And, and then I've been hearing these unbelievably beautiful, moving, powerful relationships that are already there for you, a lot of you and a lot of us um, with all of these goddess archetypes. And that's not a coincidence. And that's, it, yeah, it's part of this whole transformation that our world, I think, is trying to go through is that um, these energies are, are speaking as us and through us. So we, we want to be holding space for that reality that this is like, like we want to be holding the space essentially for us each to be midwifing, birthing these goddesses into the world in our, each our own unique ways. Um, but within a container that is, that feels safe and held where, we will provide, you know, information. Like certainly you can learn, like if you don't know about Persephone, you certainly will learn about it. But it's also so much about giving that voice through you. And so you're the expert just as much as we are. And yeah. Yeah. I love everything what you said, Martha, because I, for me, it feels more like when, when I feel into this, uh, it feels like this first workshop around the new moon. It's yes, for sure that there will be quote unquote information but I would rather say it's inspiration mm -hmm. it's inspiration for you to find the seed of the goddess inside of you mm -hmm. and we will 
around this for this first workshop um channel the goddess and give you information and then we drop into the body and then when the share when the sharing circle happens really the goddess can speak to everybody of us and i um we are both not saying that we are experts we are both not and i am actually super excited about really diving deeper into each goddess every month and deepening my own wisdom and knowledge and felt experience with the certain goddess and for sure we will um give you information and inspiration around the mythology the original mythology the pre-hellenic mythology um, the archetype and so on but yeah it, i think it will be a very um it will be more ref, left uh, more right brain than left brain and more body wisdom than intellect so we will connect everything but it's not a straight workshop where you sit there and take notes and everything is happening until the, to the throat chakra just in the head and yeah so yeah i'm really and you're excited. welcome to you're welcome to come and take notes that's fine too yes <laughs> just, yeah but that's sure. not really the point like the point is more the full full embodied full self experience of this that the reality is that we are all of these energies and these energies are everything yeah and yeah beautiful yeah. and you find um yeah you will find very soon the registration uh, on teachable and at the moment it's not yet set up but it will come and the best way to be informed um, or to stay connected when the goddess series is happening and the best way to stay connected with martha and me around other projects that we have because we are doing other things separate from each other as well so when you feel called to both of us or to one of us you find every um yeah the description to um, our newsletter so and our website in the description of the video and we would love to um, hear from you um, hear what you are feeling about this video but also um, yeah reach out to us if you are um, if you want to join our goddess series we start in January and yeah what else yeah. to say <laughs> I think that's it. Just also definitely we would love to hear um, comments. Anything about this video really, really, really fuels us, helps us to know what's resonating and not resonating and what are the needs. Because again, the stuff is coming. We're not trying to be the experts. We're trying to like go with the flow of what the collective is needing and where, yeah, where the healing is needing to happen. So it's so fulfilling and so wonderful for me when I get feedback it really helps me um of any kind like this resonated this didn't I, whatever anything just it's yeah really 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 good so same here um, yes <laughs> thank you all for watching and yeah thank you martha for doing that with me together yeah thank you see you all soon <laughs>